Welcome to today's 3D print. More light. Oh, much better. <laughs> Another tech tips um, video. One of my viewers had a problem making the a spiral vase. Um, the first problem was he was trying to vase print something that couldn't really be vase printed. It'll work, I've done it, but it comes out squirrely. But anyway, he had um, problems with um, cracking, splitting layers, and warping. I was like, that don't make sense. That only happens to ABS and other high strength plastics. And he said, no, it's PLA. I was like, ah, okay, your problem is not splitting and cracking. So finally he sent me some pictures, and sure enough, there was splitting and cracking. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. So I had him send me the settings, and then I saw the problem. He was printing at 0.25 millimeter layer height. You can't do that. So this video is going to explain why and the mechanics of that so that you will understand when you see this happen to your prints and be able to self-diagnose. Okay, remember we were talking about filament. So pretend this is a solid disc, no holes, okay? So here's your filament, and here's your next layer of filament. Now, um, how to describe this, I think. I guess I could, I could probably use this if I can break it off. Uh-oh, it's this again. <laughs> I'm being careful. I don't ever want to experience that crap again. Okay, it's too brittle. It's not going to work. I need to find something else. Um, really, I don't have anything that will work. Need a tube. tube. Oh, this will work. Okay, as we know, when you print, this is what you get out of the printer a solid extrusion of filament. So pretend this is a 0.4 millimeter extrusion of plastic coming out of your printer. But we print a layer height of 0.2, okay, which means your extrusion is being flattened like this. Okay, it's still 0.4 millimeter area, we're just squishing it down to 0.2, which means we actually get a little bit less than 0.4 wide because the printer will adjust how much plastic it's putting out so that when it squishes it, it still ends up at 0.4 millimeter wide because that's what we've defined in the software. We've told it we want it to be 0.2 high and 0.4 wide. Well, um, we're going to ignore that and we're just going to call it 0.4 for the purpose of this discussion to keep things simple and you'll still understand just fine. Okay, so when you squish them, you have an overlap, an area where the two layers overlap. Okay, This can be represented this way to keep it simple. Remember, these are actually being squished into an oval, but this makes a simple representation. Okay, This is a point contact, so this would be a 0.2 millimeter layer out of a 0.4 millimeter nozzle with a layer height of 0.4. Okay, So if you changed your layer height to 0.4, each layer would be this tall. Let's assume this is 0.4. Okay? There's a problem with that though, because your nozzle is only 0.4, which means your layer would be a perfect circle. It would be a tube of filament coming out of the printer that's 0.4 millimeters across. Your printer would faithfully do that if you told it to. But the problem is, if you have a 0.4 millimeter round extrusion of plastic that you're laying down to design your part, and then you go up 0.4 millimeter to your second layer and you lay down your next extrusion of plastic on top of that, they can only touch by this much, plus whatever you get from gravity pushing them down, which will eventually cause a gap. Okay? That's a point contact. So we've discussed this before in the CR10 leveling video, this doesn't work. So as a crude approximation, when we overlap these two, you notice here it's a point contact. But as they overlap, if you take the two point contact here and here, you get a larger area of contact. That is the two ovals flattening out and giving you that larger surface area for the parts to connect, okay? So let's turn this vertically. This is layer one, this is layer two, they're overlapping. Well, here's the problem. What happens when I wanna put a layer over here? Hmm, so you've already made a mistake. When I do this, see how I'm bringing this down to compensate for the fact that I'm coming over? Mm hmm. When you print this, layer one, 
layer one, layer one, layer one. These are your say these are your perimeters, okay? They're all 0.2 millimeter high, or in his case, 0.25 millimeter high. Now, when it goes to print layer two, it's going to lift up 0.25 millimeter. Okay, now there is an overlap there because we are doing a 0.4 millimeter extrusion. But here's the problem. What happens when the wall of whatever I'm printing is curved? Okay, such as this. See how this curves inward? Okay, well, in order for it to, remember, there is no such thing as a curve for a printer, technically. It's, um, it's a layer. So it's like you cut out a circle on a piece of paper and you lay it down. You cut out another circle on a piece of paper, lay it down, another circle, lay it down, another circle, lay it down. So circle, 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 circle. Actually, I got a whole bunch of these. So if you keep laying down circles, you're just going to make, ultimately, a cylinder. Okay? So how do we get this? How do we get a curve? Okay? Well, the way we get that is by laying down our base cylinder, and then we take another cylinder and we make it smaller. And then another cylinder, make it smaller, smaller, smaller. We curve the walls inward by making a smaller circle. So that's like you taking a piece of paper, cutting out a circle, putting it down, and then you cut out another circle, a little bit smaller than the first one, put it down. Another circle, a little bit smaller than the first one, and put it down. And eventually you'll have an arc based on how much smaller each circle is, determines whether your arc is shallow like this, or if it's a, a heavy arc, like the top of Squirrel's head here. <laughs> Sneak peek, you're gonna have to wait to see that. Um, so, when you're printing, you can represent this by this being, if we were to take this, for example, see the cylinder, and we were to go and cut it in half, so we were looking at the edge of this right here. We did a cross section of this. What you would see is this. This would be layer one. This would be layer two. This would be layer three, okay? You would see three flattened circles. If we looked at the first three layers, okay? And there would be a flat between these. Remember, they're ovals, okay? So this area would be flat where they intersect and you'd have these little tiny curved walls on the outside. Now, the lower your layer height, the more the overlap. And so the difference, if you look here, see how there's a pretty significant arc here? Think of this as 0.2 millimeters exaggerated, okay? So you have this as your sidewall. Now if I bring the layers closer together, say 0.12 millimeter, you'll notice these are not nearly as large. See how the dips are tinier? Okay, that's why a 0.12 millimeter print looks so smooth on the side, okay? It also reduces the little jitters in your printer that cause little tiny layer misalignments. So you have two things that cause you to see those layers. The actual size of the layers, and then you have the, um, the precision of your printer to accurately place each layer on top of the previous layer. That's why prints such as from the Z5F, you know, they're okay, they look good, but you can clearly see them. But then you look at a print from the Ender 2 and you can't even see them. They just disappear, okay? Because that printer is extremely good at laying layers on top of each other in exactly the same position as the previous layer. Any slight discrepancies in laying one layer on top of another result in little changes in the surface of the model as those layers shift around, okay? Now, when you go to print an arc, here's your vertical wall. When you go to print an arc, you have to shift this layer one direction over, but you cannot lift it up or down. Remember, your layer height is defined. It is 0.2 millimeters no matter where you place this layer. So if I tell you to place it here, you're placing the layer in midair. It's just gonna fall because there's nothing underneath it to catch it. That's where you would either have to have another layer here to catch that first layer, like this, okay? Or you would have to add support, okay? Now when you do vase mode, there are no other perimeters. So you can't have, normally what would happen is you would print this layer, then you'd print this layer, and then you'd shift this layer over, and it would be supported by, remember there's an overlap, they don't sit on top of the tangent point, there's an overlap. 
so it would sit over top of both of these layers and so it would still be supported and that would allow you to get your angled wall as your layers went up but if you have no second perimeter that's why when I do these giant luby prints I use four perimeters because I want to make sure there is something to hold up that layer when I shift it over to do a curved wall okay that's why this is, is part of why this is three perimeters this would work as one but that's an example of why so that when this layer moves over in a little bit to make this curve it's actually sitting on top of the second perimeter down here so it's still supported but if you do a vase print that doesn't exist because it's one perimeter and you can't orbit around the first perimeter and build the wall sideways because that's not how 3D printers work. 3D printers work in discrete layers. Okay? So when you're when you're ready to when you do your first layer and you do your phase print and you get this, okay, single perimeter, or better this, okay, you get your single perimeter. Oh geez, I got one right here I can use to show you. The squish layer. <laughs> I'm holding it. Uh, but anyway when you do your second layer, you know, second layer, so here's your first extrusion cross section, and here's your second extrusion cross section. When it's a cylinder, it's no problem. The layers stack, okay, and their overlap is what adheres them together. That's why you do a 0.2 millimeter layer height for a 0.4 millimeter extrusion. If you were to do a 0.1 millimeter nozzle, you could not do a 0.2 millimeter layer height because the maximum layer height you can do is a theoretical perfect circle of 0.1 millimeter. Okay? That's why the maximum theoretical layer height for a 0.4 millimeter nozzle is 0.4, but that's a point contact. It's just not going to work, especially if your printer is not precise. That's why we usually try to stay about 75% of whatever your layer height is. So if you want to do a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, you really don't want to go past 0.3 millimeter layer height, and unless your printer is very good, 0.3 millimeters is really pushing it. We typically like to stop at like 0.28. So think of it as like 70%, okay? That's, I don't know what the science is behind it, that's just the way the math works out, 70% tends to be reliable. Anything over 70% and you're running into unknown territory. Printers like the um, Ender could probably get away with slightly higher. Printers like the Prusa um, i3 Mark II, they could probably um, get away with it because those printers are very, very well built, they're very well designed, so they're very precise. A printer like the Zone Star Z5F probably could not get, get away with a 0.28 millimeter layer height. You're probably going to have defects because the printer isn't precise enough. So, with a 0.2 millimeter layer height, there's plenty of overlap there so that if the printer is off by a tiny bit, it's still going to print fine. You'll just have small little imperfections in your print. You can see the little wobble there on the front of the bow of the ship there. Okay, see it right there. You'll just have little imperfections like that. But if that were a single wall at maximum layer height, that wouldn't be an imperfection, it'd be a failure because the part would fall off the edge. It would, it would be nothing underneath it. So his print was failing because it was a very acute angle vase. This is a very shallow angle vase. But the spiral vase is a very acute angle vase. The, the angle is like this. So when he had it up so high at 0.25 millimeter, when he shifted over like this, oops, see? There's a gap. Remember, you can't go over and down because now you're moving into your previous layer. You have to move up 0.25 and then move over to make your curve. Now if you only move over a little bit, such as this, you're fine, it'll still work. Your wall might be a little thin, the connection might be a little weak because you're approaching that point contact which you don't want. Okay? So the solution for him was to lower his layer height so that when it moved over, the second layer was still touching the first layer. Because of his higher layer height, he had a gap, which is why the part looked like it was splitting apart. Because it was literally, you were printing in air. There was nothing there to attach to, and so the part started splitting. As soon as he lowered his layer height to 0.2, and increased his extrusion multiplier as a backup to thicken the wall, so he was getting a little bit more than a 0.4 millimeter extrusion, we were telling it to put a little more plastic there. So I told him to do 125%. That's what I usually do for my vase. It gives me nice, firm walls. That allowed him to then print it, and it was perfect, no problem. But that is the reason his part was failing. He was going up 0.25 millimeters, and then it moved over, because the next layer was on an arc, okay? And it moved, because of his layer height and how much he moved over, there was no longer this 
contact patch. It separated. So you ended up with the part here, and then the part, this part was able to curve up, and this part was able to curve out, because it wasn't attached to the previous layer. Okay? So if you want to use a .25 on a thin vase like that, you're going to really want like a .5 millimeter nozzle. At a .4 millimeter nozzle, to do acute angle vases, you need to lower the layer height, okay? Which means, because remember, you're still doing 0.4 millimeter wide, right? So if I, you're going to have this big of a contact patch with 0.2 millimeter, you're going to have this big of a contact patch with 0.1 millimeter. So at 0.25, his contact patch was okay for vertical walls, but as soon as he started shifting over to do the arc, he lost contact. The two strands of filament weren't touching each other anymore, and so he had cracks and splits and holes in the print. Um, by lowering the layer height, he brought them back into contact, and by thickening them, he got a bigger overlap patch. And now his second layer was touching the first layer, and it stayed put and printed the way it was supposed to, and successful vase. So that's the explanation for why um, the, a vase would split apart like that and how to diagnose it. Remember, when you do a vase, you don't have that second layer sitting next to the first layer to support the angle on the vase. There's nothing there. So if there's a gap between these two, it's not going to work. You can usually see this in your slicer. If you open up your slicer um, and tell it to show you the extrusions from the top, okay, so that it... um. So that you're looking at your extrusions from the top like this, uh, it'll look like, for you, it'll look like that. And you'll actually see it. When you zoom in on the part where it tends to break apart, you'll actually be able to look through it. Because the slicer will faithfully show you that it's not going to work. You, it, it doesn't stop you, but if you zoom in, you can usually see that the there's an actual gap there as it arcs over. And it can't get the two parts close enough with the specifications you specified to do that. If it's really, really close, it might actually show it as being complete, but it's not. Okay? So remember, when you do a vase print, there's nothing to support your next extrusion layer on top of the first layer. Okay? So you have to make sure that your layer height is low enough and your multiplier is high enough to ensure that when that angle occurs, when it moves that layer over in order to get your arc, your curve, and the, the sharper the curve, the more it has to move each layer over in order to get it. And eventually what's going to happen is your layer is going to move out to the point where it's not quite contacting anymore. And so any deviation at all in your printer, any extrusion goof up, any wobble, any wind blowing, whatever, might be enough to cause them to, oops, they're not touching, and then your parts just warp away. Okay? So lower the layer height, and if you, want, if you still have a problem like this, print it fine, but it's a little weak. I can feel it right here where the angle is most. I can feel it right here. feels great. feels good. But once I get up here, right there, ooh, really, really thin. Okay? So on this, I would want to increase. You can actually even see it. Can I make that be? Oh, yeah. Right there. You can see how it changes color and density from here to here. That's because here you got good solid layer contact, but here the layer contact is barely there. It's there. This is even watertight. Yep, it's watertight. But um, the layer contact is barely there. So I would really, I'm okay leaving this at 0.2. I would just increase the extrusion multiplier to like 110%, 115%, just to increase the thickness of this wall a little bit so you get a better contact patch. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions, please ask below. And um, that's it. You guys have a good night.